Hey everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to another Civilization 6 video. Now in today's video we are going to be doing a strategy guide to Babylon. Now this should be useful no matter what difficulty you play on. Um, but definitely on those lower difficulties, if you can get this mastered on anything from Emperor below, you will be laughing and will have a pretty good chance at winning a domination victory, especially on King and things like that. This strategy will be very, very useful to you. But the, the core bits of it will be good for people playing on Deity as well. So what makes Babylon so unique? Well, firstly, the whole point of this strategy guide is to draw on and make the most of its unique civ ability, which is Enuma, Anu, and Leal. Now, what this means is that your overall science production is actually halved, but crucially, Eurekas instantly unlock their respective technology, which allows you to reach far more advanced techs much earlier than you can attain them with any other civilization. So basically, if you can... Fulfill the criteria to get a science Eureka for any science in the game, you will get that. And that's going to allow us to get more advanced techs. And in this video, we'll focus on bombards and artillery. You're going to be able to get those techs um, very early on. And we'll, we're going to discuss that as we go on. By the way, a massive thank you to everybody who left tips when I put a, a community post out. I'm going to feature your comments on screen right now. I really do appreciate that. And if you've commented, then thank you. I hope you do again. And if you'd wanted to comment but maybe forgot or just didn't see it, make sure that you do leave your comments on the community post because I will feature them. I like featuring ideas in videos and stuff. So yeah, thank you to everybody who did comment. So what is the overall strategy in this video and how are we going to approach it? Well, First up, our overall strategy is going to be to try and show how getting bombards and artillery especially earlier on than you usually would and earlier on than your rivals, how powerful that can be and also how are you going to do it, how are you going to get techs like bombards, how are you going to get artillery, how are you going to get musketmen, how are you going to get infantry and the kind of criteria and steps you need to take to get them early on and really push for your domination victory. Another thing we're going to look at and another thing to bear in mind throughout this is that Whilst you're doing this, you're going to have to make sure you're building commercial hubs because money is going to be very important. Those advanced techs are going to take a lot of money up and going to require you to have a strong economy because obviously their upkeep costs more. You're also going to have to upgrade things, so money is going to be useful there as well. And the second thing, and this sort of ties in with a few of the Eurekas we're going to be trying to achieve, but you're going to have to build a lot of industrial zones and other things which give you production because... As you know, I'm sure, more advanced units in the game take more production to build. So if you want to actually be able to get these out and make the most of your advantage in tech, you're going to have to build plenty of industrial zones and have plenty of production. The final thing I want to mention is that the gameplay on screen is just an example. I was experimenting with a lot of stuff as we went through. Um, so I'm playing on Emperor. Now this strategy probably will work on the higher difficulties. It will just be tougher and you'll have to make sure that you get to the text probably quicker than I did if you want to make the most of it on Deity. But on anything from Emperor below, especially if you're playing on like something like King, this strategy is going to allow you to win a domination victory pretty easy, I imagine. So yeah, that's kind of the basic of that. Also, I played on Quick Speed, which sort of doesn't give me the biggest advantage. Probably Babylon's best play style is for longer games because it gives you longer to achieve those Eurekas but still I kind of wanted to play through the game and experiment so I, I played it on quick. So the way I'm going to explain this strategy and the tech routes in it because a lot of this stuff as you'll realize as we go through you're just trying to get from one Eureka to another to ultimately get to something like steel for artillery the technology steel that is. Um, so we're going to split it up into three parts. So the first steps I'm going to talk about include getting to bombards and musketmen, kind of how you're going to get there, what you're going to have to do to finally get a bombard and things like that. And also I'm going to talk about why I think using them could be important in this strategy if it's what you want to do. What I'm going to do after that is talk about getting to artillery and infantry and why that's important. Um, again, I'm going to explain the path to you on how you can get artillery earlier on than other civilizations. And then finally, as a sort of more general thing, we're going to talk about tips and a starting strategy. I'm going to do this because I think there's a lot of criteria that you need to be able to tick off early in the game so that you don't come up short later on. So for example, you need to find two, found two coastal cities early on. Things like that, just making sure that you are prepared um, so that you can fulfill the criteria of getting things like steel for, bomb, for um, artillery. So the first section then, the first steps. So getting access to bombards and musketmen. Now the reason I think it makes sense to include this step is twofold. So firstly, many of the steps on the way to artillery and on the way to the steel technology to get artillery 
do require these anyway. So you're probably going to get access to bombards anyway. So you might as well talk about how you're going to specifically get there. And the second reason is that it makes sense in my opinion, especially on those lower difficulties where you're probably not going to need artillery to triumph over your enemies straight away. It makes sense to use your bombards and musketmen earlier on to maybe knock out a nearby civ. This will allow those troops to get more experience and therefore be stronger units with more promotions when you finally upgrade them to artillery or from your musketmen to your infantry. So I'm going to talk about now these steps and what kind of criteria you need to make sure you get these. So the first thing you need to do is get access to NITA because NITA is the resource which will allow you to build bombards and musketmen. Without NITA there's no point having these because you can't build them. So what you need for that is essentially to get to the technology military engineering and the way you do that is first up you research masonry from there, you build ancient walls in one city. Masonry allows you to do that. If you build ancient walls in one city, this gives you the Eureka for engineering. Engineering allows you to build an aqueduct. And if you build the aqueduct, you trigger the Eureka for military engineering, which, like I said, reveals NITRA on the map and allows you to, first of all, locate it and hopefully get access to it. Because if you can't access it, then you cannot build bombards or um, musketmen, which is part of this early strategy. From this point, it's actually pretty simple to get musketmen because all you have to do is build an armory once you have military engineering. Now, this shouldn't be too tough. Obviously, military engineering should allow you to build an armory. Just make sure that you've built an encampment somewhere. If you've built an encampment, all you have to do is build an armory and that will give you gunpowder, which gives you musketmen. So to get NITA and musketmen, they're very much connected, as are a lot of these technologies, as we'll see as we go on. Now the big one then, getting a bombard. Um, so it's very simple actually to get a bombard compared to the other two. All you've got to do is get a slinger, kill a unit with a slinger, which gives you the Eureka for archery. If you own three archers, obviously you can build archers from archery, then that gives you the Eureka for machinery. If you own three crossbowmen, machinery gives you crossbowmen. So if you own three crossbowmen, you get metal cast in and then you can build a bombard. So it's very simple. All you have to do is have three archers, three crossbowmen, and then you will get access to bombards. And then what's really good about bombards is that they have a range strength of 55. So if you get them early on in the game, obviously you need access to NITRA as well. But if you can use bombards early on in the game, they're very powerful. They have 20 more range strength than a catapult. They have 20 more melee strength than a catapult, I believe. So they're very strong early on in the game, and if you can get them, you can definitely make use of them. The final tip I want to give in the first steps is that you can also get access to field cannons pretty early on as well. Now, all you have to do for this is make sure that you get a military engineer. Obviously, this comes with the military engineering tech we've already discussed, and if you do that and build two forts in your own territory, then you get field cannons. So that's pretty simple. All of that's very useful and hopefully you'll be able to use that to capture a few cities. So the second big part of this involves getting both artillery and infantry and as well we'll talk about this at the end but getting oil as well. So the reason you really want artillery and why this should be your sort of ultimate goal when following these Eureka paths is that artillery is ridiculously strong if you get it early on in the game. So as a little comparison artillery has a range strength of 80 compared to a catapult's 35. So you can see that you're going to bring city walls down incredibly fast if you get artillery early on in the game. So getting artillery requires you to unlock the steel technology. And the way to do this is in two parts. So the Eureka to this is basically in two parts. You need a coal mine and an ironclad. So I'll explain how you get each one of those. So firstly, to get a coal mine, you need to unlock the technology mining. From there, build three mines. Building three mines will trigger the Eureka for apprenticeships. From there, build three workshops, which triggers the Eureka for industrialization. And then that should reveal coal in order to allow you to build a coal mine. The second part of this, getting the ironclad, requires you to get steam power. So getting steam power. So first of all, from machinery, which you'll already have got while striving to get your bombards. You know, when you build three arches, you get the Eureka for machinery. So once you've got machinery, build a lumber mill. That will trigger the Eureka for mass production. 
From there, build two shipyards, which will trigger the Eureka for steam power. And once you've got steam power, if you have coal as well, it will allow you to build an ironclad, which is, is kind of, you know, ticking off those boxes. So that is how you get the Eureka for steel and therefore get access to artillery. It's worth saying as well that in the vanilla base game, um, or in Just Rise and Fall as well. Basically, if you've not got Gathering Storm, Steel will also show oil on the map and give you access to oil. But if you're playing Gathering Storm, you'll need to do something else, which I'll talk about in a second. So, to get infantry, just build three musketmen, basically. So, yeah, we talked about how to get musketmen in the previous part. So, just build three musketmen, and that will um, give you infantry if you want to use them. So the final thing I want to mention is that if you're playing Gathering Storm, you will need to get the refinement tech to get access to oil. This is pretty easy to do. All you have to do is basically build two coal power plants. It's not so tough. Just build factories in two cities, then build two coal power plants, and that will give you access to oil in Gathering Storm. Now, if you get this combination pretty early on, you'll be able to wipe at least a couple of sieves off with a massive advantage. Um, and then obviously you'll have a big army, you'll have a lot of territory, which will give you a very, very good platform to push on and conquer the rest of the world. As you can see, I played as um, Babylon. I took out the Phoenicians, just as an example, I was toying about with a lot of stuff. But if you've got this strategy spot on, getting these two techs, following these tech Eureka plans is very, very powerful. So as the final part of this strategy guide, I want to just give some tips and starting strategy. So the first thing I want to mention is that early on, I think it's a good idea to get out a couple of early slingers. Now you want to make sure that you get that slinger kill. So probably just try and make sure you kill a barbarian with a slinger in order to unlock archery. Otherwise that could hold you back a little bit. It's not only crucial to get this Eureka to unlock all the paths we discussed. I mean, this is at the foundation of a lot of the paths to getting and bombards and artillery for example but it's also good to have archers and crossbowmen early on in the game um, in order to fight off any early attacks from your neighbors especially on those higher difficulties the second point i want to make is that make sure you have a city where you can build an aqueduct and also make sure you have two cities where you can build harbors for your shipyards early on because if you can't build an aqueduct or you can't build um, harbors then this strategy will not work for you so make sure you have one city where you can build an aqueduct and two coastal cities where you can really or at least two coastal cities where you can go um, for harbors and shipyards with this and other kind of niche criteria required i think it makes sense to kind of spread out pretty early on do some land grabbing i mean this is something i do in pretty much every game as uh, anyway so yeah probably go for that early empire civic and um, to get the, the get the the production of the settlers and then you can spread your empire pretty quick and then really focus on homing in on these techs. The next thing I want to mention is that all the building and upgrading you'll need to do along the way is an expensive game both in terms of money and production. I sort of touched at this right at the start of the video but it's something you need to bear in mind. So make sure you build lots of commercial hubs as I said and also make sure you get plenty of industrial zones. Industrial zones aren't just required for those Eurekas, you know, the getting to coal power plants and stuff, but they also are going to give you some much needed production um, for, for later game units, which you're going to need to build. So do build quite a few industrial zones, not just the couple that you require. The next thing I want to mention is that you need to be prepared. Now, this means that basically having a good plan and making sure you're not caught out by things. So, for example, if you're going to get access or if the map's going to reveal coal or niter in the next turn, make sure you have some builders ready to go out and grab that resource if there's some near you or in your borders. You don't want to be wasting turns in this strategy. The harder the difficulty, obviously, the less leeway you have. But the ultimate note here is that your technolo technological advantage will only last so long civs will catch up they'll get field cannons for themselves they'll get musketmen and infantrymen for themselves so do make sure that you're prepared that you're making the most of the strategy because every turn counts and every turn that goes on is probably going to see your advantage diminishing especially if you're not building kind of science districts and things like that so in conclusion this is just a pretty fun strategy if you follow the eureka's I've put on, on in this video to get to those powerful technologies. I'm pretty sure on the lower difficulties, they will be very, very powerful. However, this is just a foundation strategy. You know, there's so many other techs that you can aim for that will be useful. 
There's certainly policies and tech, such as the printing press, which will give additional diplomatic vision, which will definitely enhance your game and enhance your chances of winning. So let me know exactly how you would use these sort of Eureka paths down in the comments and what kind of Eurekas you've really been focusing on getting as well in your game as Babylon. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you want to see another one of our Civ videos, then make sure you check out the video in the box below. Also, make sure you hit the like button if you found it useful or enjoyed and subscribe to the channel for more Civ 6 content.